Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite things and that is the Rubato customer and competitor analysis. It is so simple, I'm gonna talk you through five steps to do it with a bonus at the end. But before I do that, I'm gonna first talk about what this is. It is getting inside the head of the customer or potential customer so you can have a relevant conversation with them about your product or service and how it's better or how it will help them. So if you're trying to convince your friend to go to a restaurant, you say, hey, last time I went, the ambience was great. There's this little garden in the back. I'd like to try to sit in if we can. The, the food is amazing. I ordered this appetizer and then I had this, but there were these other things I wanna try. And you talk about, you know, maybe there's some live music. You talk about the wine. You talk about, you know, other cocktails or what have you. And then maybe they're asking questions back like, oh, what kind of food is it? How far away is it? Oh, do you think we need a reservation or do we not? And so that's how any conversation goes whenever somebody is recommending something. So through advertising, we're recommending something and we have to know what that conversation is that we're actually having. So these five steps will help you understand what they're saying back to you so that you can construct messaging and creative and even campaign structure around those things to have a proper conversation with them. And this is so highly effective for, for, for performance. <laughs> so let's go through the five steps. Number one is reading all the reviews that you possibly can and making a list across both either your client or yourself if you're the brand and every single other competitor that you have lined up for this particular project. So I recommend having probably five to six competitors to really do this very, very well. Have at least two though. So as you're looking through those reviews, make sure to write down, I usually choose five, five reasons why customers love the product, is their favorite ever product or service. And then five reasons why they hate it, why it was a terrible experience for them, they hated it, they wish they hadn't have bought it, and then do that across every single one of the competitors so you have your list of five and five on every single one of those. Make sure to not just look at website reviews, look at Amazon reviews, look at Google reviews. If there's Facebook reviews, look at those as well. It's also important to note with reviews that you're looking for skepticism. You're looking for objections. You're looking for what they thought before and then what their experience was. And people will really tell you this. They'll expound upon things. They'll say, well, I wasn't sure because this, or I'd heard about this, but then I decide to try it, why not? And whenever I got it, I thought it looked a little sketch, but once I opened it, whatever. People really talk you through their process, so make sure to take notes about that as well. It's going to be very valuable for you to understand this. Step number two is similar. It's reading through comments in both posts, organic posts, and also ads. So as the client, or as uh, if you have a client, then you probably have access to their ads, obviously, if you're running them yourself. Um, and so you can actually go into Ads Manager and you can pull up every single ad and read through all of the comments on all of the ads. On competitors, you're going to have to get retargeted. So go through their flows. You can go to Ads Library, but you're not going to be able to read comments there. So you have to go and try to get retargeted. I, I encourage you to go through to add to cart because most brands, if they're smart <laughs> and they're running ads, they should be retargeting add to cart and on pretty short date ranges. So you should be able to get targeted pretty easily there. You can also try to get retargeted on other platforms, TikTok, YouTube, etc. cetera. Um, but you know, Facebook and Instagram is a great place that most people are live on. So that's where I usually start. And also on the organic content side, go into their posts and start reading, and your own posts, start reading those comments. Um, if, if a brand has enough engagement, people will start talking. I, I will never forget, I was actually going through and Bulletproof Coffee was one of my client's competitors, and I started reading through what people were talking about, and people weren't talking about coffee or uh, you know coffee creamers or anything like that. They were talking about how they felt taking on their day, how they felt empowered, how they felt confident. And that, I will, I will never forget that. It was one of the first ones I'd ever done. And I just thought, wow, <laughs> this is what people care about. It's not about the product itself. So dig in, see what you find there. Step number three is comparing steps one and two. So looking at all the comments, all the reviews, and looking at that across uh, the brand that you're 
that you're working with or working on and then all of the competitor brands and then comparing that to what is front and center on the website or on the landing pages. So what is the unique selling point that you as the client or brand is actually putting out to the world with your headlines, with the flow that you're bringing people through? And then how does that compare with the comments and the reviews and the things that people have really loved or hated about your product? That's step number one of this uh, step number three. You shouldn't use steps for all of these. But the second part of this is to do that across all of the competitors and look at what is the unique selling point that they are pushing out there to the world and then look at how their customers have interacted with them or how people on social media have interacted with them. Are those two things aligned? It's really interesting, many times they're not, and that's a very quick and easy way just to align the brand in small ways with small bits of messaging with what consumers are talking back with. And that is when the conversation becomes more efficient and, and higher performing. Number four is honestly more of a creative thing than a messaging thing, but it's trying to pull competitor ads and example ads. So understanding what are the visual elements, what is the actual content that they have out there, how are they presenting themselves to the world, and it's, it's good to understand that so that you can either steal some ideas from that or you can position yourselves differently, but it's also interesting to see how their ad programs compare with their uh, overall customer chatter coming back through those comments and reviews with their website. And many times people's ad program does not accurately represent what's happening in the other organic parts of the business. So it's important to notice that, to take notes not only for the brand uh, or the client, but also those competitor brands and to try to observe that as best as you can. Step five is digging into search terms. So on both Amazon and Google, if, if you are live on Google search or Amazon search, there should be search terms in there. And depending on how large the program is, uh, you know, those search terms will be a, a lot or a little. But especially if you're running on broad or phrase match, you are going to see a lot of actual search terms different than the keywords that you're targeting. And this is so fascinating sometimes to see what people have actually typed into Google. This is a way to get inside the head of the user and we have discovered so many things from this very simple exercise and we built out very customized messaging sets to speak to people in the way that they're speaking back with us. So this is not, uh, is by far not the most important thing that you can do, but you will probably learn something so long as you have enough volume in there. Okay, time for the bonus. The bonus is something that we don't always include. It depends on how much time we really have to dig into each brand because it does take several hours to do this. Um, this could probably take two to three days if we really dug in uh, you know, on a, a super, super granular level. But you can go into Google search or Instagram or TikTok and obviously in Google search you can search with keywords, but in the other social platforms you can search with hashtags. YouTube is also a place where you can search with keywords. And for keywords that are highly related to your particular industry, see what comes up. What are the top articles that come up? What are the top videos? What is the content that people are engaging with the most? What are the comments and the, the feedback that people are giving? If it's a social post, what are people talking about? This is super interesting as well. There's, there's been times that we found very big influencers that people are really engaging with in the same vertical as some of our clients and we're able to kind of see how that influencer talks to those users and how they're talking back in that conversation we're able to mimic that and that has been highly powerful in a few uh, cases for us so this is something that's more of a bonus if you have time for it the other five are really going to get you in a great place but if you have time to really dig even further to go down the rabbit trail even further, this is a great thing to spend some time doing.